Well, we certainly got to see all of the platform technology uh, that allows rich integration uh, being exploited by Infinity. Let me move now uh, to another area, another major area for technical workstations, which is mechanical design automation, MDA. Uh, here we have, again, a variety of products, and enterprise integration is a key issue. Uh, we want to have all the applications, and we want to exchange manufacturing data, cost data, defect data, very easily between these tools and the business applications. And one thing we're seeing in this category is a new breed of applications, applications that were designed uh, from scratch uh, to take advantage of NT. Uh, one of the leaders in this is definitely SolidWorks, and so we're very excited to have the CEO of Sol SolidWorks, uh, John Hirschdick, uh, and he's going to come up and talk about the work they're doing. Hi, Bill. Welcome, John. Thank you. Uh, we'd like to have you come over and get a look at SolidWorks. Okay. Uh, here you can go stand over by Rick. Let me introduce Rick Chen. Rick's a product Hi, manager Rick. at SolidWorks. He's an expert on mechanical design and CAD. SolidWorks is the first mechanical CAD program developed specifically for Windows. And what we're going to show you is the supercharger model, like you'd have in a high performance car. I think you know a little about <laughs> those, right? And so. Uh, what Rick's, what Rick's going to do is use the supercharger model that was actually built by a customer of ours in Southern California called Genesis Superchargers. And he's going to show you how we've managed to take really powerful 3D solid modeling and bring it to the desktop with an unprecedented level of ease of use and communication capability with the rest of the enterprise. And we've been able to do that because, as you said, we're a Windows native product. So Rick's going to take you through modeling one of the pieces here. What is this, Rick? Which piece? OK, actually, this is the outlet manifold. And what it does is it takes the high pressure air from the supercharger and feeds it into the cylinders. And the first thing I'd like to show you is basically how the Windows paradigm applied to engineering basically makes modeling a lot easier than it's been in the past. Things like this part is made up of a set of features. And um, what I'd like to do right here is change the overall size of the part. And the standard way to do that is to change the value of a dimension. Here I'm changing it from three inches down to two. And then the model knows how to update itself to reflect that change. Now that was the standard way. Let's look at the Windows way. How about drag handles? So this is a lot like changing the size of a chart inside of Excel. It's that same exact paradigm. And it just makes people more comfortable because they're familiar with that type of interaction. And you know, another way we've used Windows ideas to make modeling easier is, called this, is this device called a feature palette over here. And this is a way for engineers to create libraries of frequently used uh, parts and features. This is a, a whole feature. It's kind of a complicated feature. He drags and drops it in one step. He's created that, that whole feature. And it's a very intelligent. These features are very intelligent. They capture Rick's intent as he builds the model. That's right. We're not just creating geometry. Basically, we're capturing design information. Like it knows to maintain a certain wall thickness and apply the clamping group to the outside of the part for us. It's just a real nice way to streamline the design. You know, if you've never seen any of these, or you've probably never used or seen any of these old generation solid modelers, but you'd have to appreciate that this would be so complicated in one of those systems. Rick, what, how complicated do you think that might have been, maybe? Well, typically, like 50 or more steps going through it, and not, you know, a yeah, prepared to user interface, and there's no concept of dragging and dropping. You just can't, it, it's just so much easier. It's, you know, 1% of the operations here. So. Uh, another thing that Rick's going to show you is how we can drag and drop features. Drag and drop's a concept we use all over the place. You don't see lots of dialog boxes or typing. We're using drag and drop here. He can drag those holes around and drop them and create new ones. He just holds down the control key while he's doing it. Yeah, it's like copying a paragraph in Word. Yeah. Just right. like Word. You know? sure. So you, you, could, you could do this yourself right, right now. It's, it's, just, it's very easy and intuitive for the Windows user. And I think it's really cool when he takes one of these round features here. We call that a fillet in our engineering environment. And he's going to drag that rounded edge over to the other edge of the part. It just rounds off. It's that, that easy. No need for complicated commands and uh, many steps. So you know, modeling's really never been this easy before. Now, lots of engineers use spreadsheets to do engineering calculations. And so what we've done is we've used OLA and COM technology to make sure that Excel spreadsheets can integrate right inside of SOLIDWORKS and can link directly to the model. 
So this is an actual analysis, right, Rick? That's right. Basically, we've got a set of pressure calculations for the supercharger. It's controlling the sizes of different pieces of the uh, supercharger. In particular, why don't you pay attention to the blue cell? That's a size that's found in this particular part. So as I change the values found inside of the spreadsheet, okay, basically you can see the value update. But the thing that's really significant here is I'm going to use Visual Basic for applications to have Excel tell SolidWorks to update itself. So it's going to grow to that new size based on the values found inside of the spreadsheet. And the point of this is all these applications on the desktop are speaking the same language. And the, basically the alternative in the past was basically write it down on a piece of paper and take it to your separate Unix workstation and do it manually. But now it's all happening in one place and the applications are doing it for you. Like you said earlier, no retyping of data. It's just, it's just integrated. Engineers really love this. Our customers use this and all the time. See, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. And you can see the values match. Now, a, another, another thing that an engineer might want to do on the workstation is take another part of the supercharger and simulate a mechanic taking a wrench and over tightening a bolt that holds the supercharger together and find out is it going to break or not if someone does that because that's going to happen in the real world. We'd much rather figure it out here on the screen rather than once we've built 50,000 of these and they're in production. So what Rick's, Rick, how are you going to do this analysis? Well, basically I'm going to use our feature management design tree. It's a tree structure just like you see elsewhere on the Windows desktop and I applied a load of 500 pounds to the end of the part and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask the system to show me an animation of some analysis results. And the one thing that John forgot to mention is the fact that what we're showing you right now is a function of the, that we didn't develop ourselves. It's basically an application called Cosmos works from a third party. But basically, they're able to achieve on the Windows desktop a seamless level of integration. Those and other solution partners. And you'd never know that you're running a separate application if I didn't tell you. Yeah, we, they, use, they use COM and OLA to integrate right into the menu bar as a third-party product. These are, what, stress waves going through? Yeah, yeah, the colors tell you where it might break. And the red, the red area would be a problem, so you can see there may be a little bit of a problem right in, in that area. We might want to do some more careful analysis. You know, any, any product in Windows can make 2D printouts. Oh, don't, don't break it, Bill. <laughs> I always break these things. They get mad at me. But any product in Windows can make 2D printouts on a piece of paper. What you're holding now is what we call a 3D printout. This was made by a device kind of like a laser printer, except instead of putting an image on paper, it actually makes this part with a laser beam in a, in a container of material. And so an engineer could have a design on the screen in SolidWorks in the morning, and in the afternoon they could be taking these prototype parts out to a car, seeing if they'll fit. It's really changing the way thousands of companies are designing things. Now, the next thing we're going to do is make a bill of materials. And again, we're using Excel embedded inside SolidWorks. The benefit there is that we, the data is already in Excel, so like you said earlier, all kinds of finance people, manufacturing, accounting, purchasing, they can all use this bill of material without any translation at all. We could pop it right into an email if we want it to. And as an application developer, we didn't have to waste time rewriting table functionality. I mean, you, believe it or not, you may not believe it, but you know, the, these other products from 10 years ago, they wrote their own table generators and word processors. It was just ridiculous. We spend all our customers' money on making engineering tools, and we use your tools to do these kinds of tasks. So uh, Rick, Rick's going to show you a hyperlink now, I think, into Internet Explorer. Is yes. that right, Rick? Yeah. Basically, Great. typically on an engineering drone, you'll see tons of notes. And since we're web-enabled, what we're able to re reduce that down to is basically a set of hyperlinks. Mm. And you can point to documents on this machine, across the company network, or maybe across the Internet. It doesn't matter. Basically, what we've done here is, oh, by the way, we are web-enabled, and that means another thing. We're an ActiveX server. So you can yeah. use the Internet Explorer to navigate your engineering data and activate it right inside of the browser and get direct access to it. What I'm doing here is, let's pretend for a moment I'm the technical documentation person, and I'm basically putting together a maintenance page for the supercharger. When I double-click on the image of the supercharger, while well, we're using object linking and embedding here, um, Windows is activating SolidWorks inside of Microsoft Word. So that documentation person has direct access to that engineer and get it inside of Microsoft Word. So maybe that person might want to rotate the part around to a different orientation. Uh, maybe we want to make it a little bit clearer. So let's explode watch, the assembly. Watch this. It's very cool. See it exploded out, all the parts. Okay, and then when we ask it to, uh, Word and SolidWorks are going to basically update the Word document to reflect the change that we just made there. 
and it's object linking and embedding, you have that option to link. So if we change the engineering design, you'll see it updated in the documentation as well. You know, a, a few years ago, Bill, people said you could never implement this kind of workstation 3D modeling on an Intel architecture machine with Windows NT. And we've proven them wrong. And not only can you do all the powerful modeling, but we've made it easier to use and a much better communication tool than, than ever before. And so the next time people go out and buy a supercharger or a fax machine yeah. or a coffee pot or a toy for your kids, you know, we have 5,000 customers using this today. You, they may get a better product that was brought to market faster because of Windows NT, Intel architecture, and SolidWorks. Fantastic. It's a great use of our platform. Thanks. Thanks Thank a you. lot. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> That was very interesting. It felt like SolidWorks was uh, a member of the office family for everybody who needs to design, design products as part of their everyday job.